The northeast of India is a land of lush greenery, fertile fields, thick forests, rolling hills and majestic mountains. The mighty Brahmaputra, one of the great rivers of the world, flows through this verdant region along with its many tributaries. The Vajrayana form of Buddhism was created in the great universities of Bihar. Thereafter, it was in the Buddhist centers of Kashmir, Odisha and the Northeast that it was developed and nurtured. In the 8th century, Guru Padma Sambhava from Nalanda University swept across the Himalaya from Kashmir to Arunachal Pradesh and created a great and unified Buddhist culture which flourishes till today. The sacred relics of Guru Padma Sambhava, who is known as the second Buddha, are believed to be enshrined at Haju in Assam. In the distant mountains of Arunachal Pradesh, the abode of clouds, far from the clamour of the material world, the philosophy of Vajrayana Buddhism is nurtured and kept alive. The period of Guru Padmasambhava is known as the first great coming of Buddhism in the Himalaya. Arunachal Pradesh is among the few places where the original Ningmapa sect of Buddhism, which was established under Guru Padmasambhava, continues till today. In the 17th century, the great Tavang Monastery, which is one of the largest in the world today, was established. It belongs to the Gelukpa sect, which was founded at the end of the 14th century. Its mural paintings were recently remade by Buddhist painters from Bhutan. Along with the monastery at Tavang, a sister establishment of nuns, an Ani Gompa, was set up on a nearby hill. In its seclusion, this nunnery preserves its gentle atmosphere and deeply religious traditions. Sikkim or Sukkim means the land of peace. There are around 200 monasteries or gompas spread across Sikkim. These are central to the lives and the culture of the deeply religious people. These belong to the early sects of Himalayan Buddhism, the Ningmapa and Kagyupa. The most prominent among these is the Dharma Chakra Center or Rumtek Monastery near Gangtok, which is the present seat of the Kagyupa sect. This sect dates to the time when Atisa of the Vikramshila University in Bihar came to preach Buddhism in Tibet in the 11th century. In the high altitude Yumthang region of Sikkim, the monasteries of La Chen and La Chung preserve the sacred tenets of the early Ningmapa sect of Buddhism. Buddhists in these mountain regions write their prayers upon flags which flutter in the breeze. They believe that the offerings of their prayers are taken by the wind and spread throughout the world. Ladakh, the land of high mountain passes, is nestled between the tallest mountains of the world, the Himalaya and the Karakoram Range. Here, 
Eternity is never beyond the vision of man. The Buddhist faith arrived here in ancient times. It brought with it belief in the harmony of the whole of creation. The belief that the transitory world around us is an illusion called samsara. We must lift the veils of this illusion to see the truth beyond. The truth of our oneness with all that there is. In a life which is constantly imbued with the consciousness of the eternal, the Gumpas or monasteries play an essential part in the life of the people. These are, in fact, the centers of all village activity. The Lamas are deeply respected and loved. Prayers are a constant refrain in everyday life. <laughs> हर एक प्राणी मतलब दुख से छुटकारा पाना चाहते हैं संसार की भाव चक्र से निकलना चाहते हैं जो गृहस्थ हैं वो तो अपने घर गृहस्थी चलाते हैं उनको अधिक मतलब बुद्ध धर्म का प्रैक्टिस करने का समय नहीं मिलते हैं बाल बच्चों के मतलब देख रेख में या कामकाज में लगे रहते हैं तो लामा लोगों को इन सब से छुटकारा पाकर इन सब को त्याग कर अपने मोह माया मतलब घर परिवार सब को छोड़कर एक मंदिर में रहते हैं तो उनको बुद्धराम की प्रैक्टिस के लिए अधिक समय मिल जाते हैं। The gentle traditions of Buddhism are continued by the people of Ladakh. Their prayer wheels are meant to unite the body, mind, and words in harmonious prayer. Mantras or sacred chants are written on scrolls of paper, which are inside the prayer wheels. These prayers are also recited while turning the wheel. Thus the faithful remain fully absorbed in thoughts and deeds related to that which is beyond. Chortans or stupas guard the entrances to the villages. They remind us that the land is truly blessed by the prayers and deeds of the faithful over the years. ये जो पूजा हमारे घर में आज हो रहे हैं ये आम तो लद्दाख के हर घर में हुआ करते हैं और महीने में एक बार ये पूजा जरूर होता है जिसे हम सांस कहते हैं इसका मतलब ये है कि जो कुछ इस महीने में बुरा बला हमने कहा हो हमारे तरफ से जो गलती हुआ हो उसे हम माफी मांगते हैं या हम काम करते वक्त जो कीड़े मकोड़े हमारे पेड़ के नीचे जाते हैं या सफाई करते वक्त मरते हैं या खेतों में काम करते वक्त उनकी फौत हो जाते हैं मौत हो जाते हैं तो उन सबों के लिए हम माफी मांगते हैं और दुआ करते हैं कि उनको जन्नत मिले और उनकी रूह को शांति मिले द वैली ऑफ संस्कार इज एन एनचांटेड लैंड इट इज स्नो बाउंड एंड कट ऑफ फ्रॉम द रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड फॉर मोर देन हाफ द ईयर इट इज अ होली लैंड which preserves ancient Buddhist traditions. The Sani stupa here was originally made in the first century by Emperor Kanishka. It is a life here in which the ceaseless noise and clamor of the modern world has not as yet intruded. In the peace of the mountains, it is the deeper meanings of life which are constantly before us. The Spiti Valley in Himachal Pradesh presents a vast and majestic landscape. It has azure blue skies, mountains of unimaginable hues and bushes of wild roses that fill the air with their fragrance. Here too, the high mountain passes, which connect this valley to the rest of the world, remain snowbound for half the year. As one can imagine, life is extremely hard. The culture of this region is steeped in the compassion of the Buddhist faith. 
The Chos Khor or Temple Complex of Tabo in Spiti was founded in 996 AD. This is the earliest functioning monastery which is believed to have been founded by Rinchen Zangpo in the second great diffusion of Buddhism in the Himalaya. Buddhism is a science of the mind. It addresses the deepest causes of sorrow and pain in the world. All sorrow comes from within us and is based upon negative emotions of greed and attachments. This faith helps us to understand ourselves, to rise in enlightenment to the Buddha nature within us. To be free from the emotions which constantly disturb us and liberate the inner joy in each of us. The Cham Dance of the Lamas signifies the victory of knowledge over ignorance. In Buddhist thought, the greatest evil is the ego. It is that sense of the self which is the greatest illusion that we must lose in order to gain true knowledge. The Lamas spend many days in preparation for the Cham. They meditate upon the divinity and prepare themselves until on the day of the Cham they will lose their own identity to be transformed into that deity. For on the sacred ground, it will not be the Lamas, but the deities who will dance. The goal of the meditation of the monks is to realize the essential oneness of the deity with their own nature. हम भी उन देवी रू रू हो सकते हैं क्योंकि उनके पास मित्रे है उनके पास करुणा है जो है उनके पास फिर उसके शीतन शक्ति है जो शक्ति हम 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 लगेगा तो उसी जब हम उस पूजा वो भगवान हमारे हाथ में नहीं लेने उनके जितने मन मन में शक्ति वो है हमारे दिल में घुसने के लिए मन में घुसने के लिए हम ये पूजा करें the monks pray to gather their spiritual powers for the sacred dance. These prayers are imbued with deep tantric meaning. Symbolic weapons are used to subdue malevolent deities. In Vajrayana Buddhism, evil is not something outside of ourselves. It is our own ego, our attachment to the illusory world around. It is this evil within us which is subdued and transformed through the prayers and finally through the experience of the Cham. The masks cover the ordinary day-to-day -day nature of the men and present instead qualities of the deities within them. There are peaceful masks and those with wrathful expressions. Finally, both symbolize the emptiness of the ultimate nature of all appearances. Through the blessings of this dance, the space where the Cham is performed is transformed into the mandala of the great Guru Padmasambhava. The dancing monks become the deities of the mandala. All aspects of the Cham carry deep spiritual meaning and significance. The lords of the cemeteries are seen as wildly raucous skeletons. They remind us of the intrinsic impermanence of all earthly matter. They also symbolize the purity of final awareness. The Linga 
or effigy they beat upon the ground represents the ego. As the linga thrashes about, the people cower in fear of its touch. The dance of the stag annihilates the ego. Finally, the linga is dismembered and cut into pieces with the dagger of transcendent wisdom. Once the linga is destroyed, consciousness is liberated eternally. Men, women and children gather at the monastery from villages near and far. For these deeply devout Buddhists, the sacred performance allows them to be in the presence of the deities they worship. The Cham cleanses the land of all negative thoughts and forces. The spiritual merit accrued by the monks is offered for the welfare of all around. The onlookers are brought to a heightened awareness of their true inner nature. For the eternal moment of the Cham, earthly reality is suspended, desires and suffering forgotten, as the deities dance, blessing every being. The Cham is believed to have the power to liberate us just by witnessing it. Vajrayana Buddhist thought has the clarity and indestructible nature of a diamond as well as the striking nature of a thunderbolt. Its purpose is to free us and to dispel the veils of ignorance with the force of a clap of thunder. The meditating monks perceive an inner reality far more true than the illusion of the material world around. The faith of the people is profound. Here, at the key monastery, they lie under the feet of the passing monks. They yearn for the touch of the robes of the deities. They believe that this will bless them. This is the land made pure by Guru Padmasambhava of the Nalanda University more than a thousand years ago. The search for the emancipation of the self continues till today. It is the desire to rise above attachments and the illusions of the material world, a search of which the Chan is an ultimate expression.